So we have a bit of a problem in our house. We have an abundance of socks that lose their mate. And it happens all the time and I don't really know where they're going. But I keep putting socks in a bucket thinking surely one of these days I'm going to be doing laundry and their mate is going to magically appear. And unfortunately it hasn't happened. So I now am left with a giant bucket of single socks. And I thought, you know, I think it's about time I make something out of this. So today, I'm going to show you guys how to create a rag rug out of single socks. So I don't know if you guys have ever priced a rag rug loom, but they're really expensive. And you should know this about me by now. I'm cheap. Frugal. Frugal, as my mom would like to say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you today how to take a very inexpensive canvas and turn this into a loom for your rag rug. So you're going to need a few things before you make this loom. One is a canvas. Now I got a value pack from Michaels. It was $14.99 and then it was 50% off that day for two. And these are 18 by 24 just in case you're wondering what size I'm using. It does not matter what size canvas you want. I was trying to get a canvas that would be about the size of a small mat because I'm wanting to put this rug in front of my sink. So I thought, well, that is about the right size. Now, you could be very ambitious and get a gigantic canvas. Go for it. You do whatever you want to do. So I'm going to show you what you're going to need to get started. So I have my canvas here. You're also going to need dowel rods. Now this one, I just had my husband cut in half for me. I ended up getting an oak dowel rod because oak is a little bit stronger and I did not want it warping when I was putting the, what I'll show you next, it's called a warp on this. I did not want this to make my dowel rod bow. So I ended up getting, this is a 5 8 inch by 36 inch. So it, it used to look like this and then my husband cut it in half for me. You just want to make sure that it's long enough to where you have room on either side of your canvas because we're going to need to pull these in and out of the little braces that I'm going to show you. You're also going to need two hole straps. Now, oh, if I can get it open. Whatever size two hole strap you get, you just want to make sure that when you mount it to this frame that you are able to slide the dowel rod in and out of that without it being too tight. So this was perfect because this little, this dowel rod would go in and out of this, no problem. Now you're going to need some screws and make sure that they will fit into the hole of your, um, your, two, -hole, your two hole strap. But also don't get them so th deep, like you don't, you kind of want the little shorties. Otherwise it's going to go through the wood on your canvas. The other thing that you are going to need, you're going to need some tools. So ladies, if you want to ensure that your tools never walk away, I have a little suggestion. Get yourself a pink tool set. This set is awesome. It works wonders. And it's miraculously all here because my boys don't want anything to do with it. And I don't have to worry that my husband is going to take one of my tools to work with him. Although he wouldn't. He has more tools than I do. But still. And how cute is this? I got a pink hammer. I love it. Okay, so you're going to need a measuring tape. You're going to need something to get these staples out of your canvas. And then... I am not going to drill these in just because this wood is very delicate and I don't want to I don't want to risk splitting the wood. So I'm actually going to use I have these little bitty tiny screwdrivers that I'm going to use to kind of um, start the little holes before I start my screws. My husband knows what that's called. What is it called? Pilot? Pilot the holes? Put a little pilot hole? I think that's what it's called. Anyway, so I'm going to do that, and then I've got a screwdriver that I'm going to use to screw the rest of these. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, and I apologize for those of you out there who's going to find this very painful, but we're going to cut the canvas off. 
Now you could have done it in a nicer way than I did and saved this canvas for something because I know there are gonna be people that are like, that's so wasteful, but sorry. Um, another thing you can do, which I actually have, like some an old painting that I don't want anymore, which by the way, you can find those a lot of times at like, um, the Salvation Army has a lot of uh, old paintings that you can get. You can get it at a garage sale. But all you're going to do is you're going to just take this canvas off. Okay, so now that I have the canvas off, I am going to remove some of these staples. I don't need to remove all of them. Um, i got this little guy right here. Some of them are so like far down into the wood that there's just no point. They're not going to bother anything. We're just going to let them be. I just want to grab a few of them that are sticking up so high that I'm afraid they're going to catch on something. Okay. And it really doesn't matter because we're actually going to be turning this side over. But again, I don't want my hand to get caught on a stray staple. All right, so I'm going to turn this over. And now what I'm going to do is I've got to figure out the placement for where I want my dowel rods to go. So I want to make sure that we have plenty of room. So I'm going to come down So we've got one side in, so now we just need to do the other side. And what I'm, we're going to do is we're going to put one of these in each of the four corners and the little opening is going to face in towards the canvas so that our dowel rod can slide right there. All right, well, I'm going to get the rest of these done and then I will show you what it looks like. So now that we have all of these in place, you're just going to slide the dowel rod through. So you want about two inches on either side so that you have plenty of room because you're going to need to be able to slide this thing back out. But one way to keep it from kind of moving on you is to get some clamps in place on here. And that way it'll keep it nice and secure while you're working. Ooh, that clamp is strong. And that way, see, this now won't go anywhere. So, and I got these. I got four of these. And they can just go on either end. So what we're going to do now is you're actually going to take a t-shirt. And I'm going to move our loom because it is now done. I'm going to move our loom over here. And so what we need to do is we have to create the warp. Now the warp is going to be, when you have your loom, the warp is going to be what goes up and down. So the vertical parts of the, of your loom that you're going to weave onto. So sometimes you'll see people use, um, hemp rope or they'll use yarn or sometimes in traditional rag rugs you would just use a long um, piece of fabric so sometimes people will cut up sheets but we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take an old t-shirt and this is going to be our warp we're going to cut this end off first now the great thing about using a t-shirt is it really doesn't matter how you cut it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You could use a rotary cutter if you have it, but for this one, we're just going to use scissors and I'm going to make these, I don't know, maybe an inch and a half wide. I don't want them too wide. Now it's important that you are cutting from side to side so that it's connected on both sides because we need this 
in the end to be a giant loop. So what you're going to do, it's going to look like this. You're going to have a giant loop, and that's what we want. We want a big old loop on this, okay? I've cut 11 strips. It does not matter how many you cut because the beauty of it is because these are loops, it's going to give us an even number because each one has two. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take one end of the dowel rod out, okay? And you're just going to slide one side of your t-shirt loop through that end. And then move it on down. And we're going to do this to every single one of them. We're just going to slide them down. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this dowel rod back through and I'm going to put the clamps on it so that this doesn't slide out and make all these loops fall off. Then I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to do the same thing. The other thing I like about these little clamps is look, it makes it like a little stand so that it keeps, keeps your loom off the table. Isn't that cool? Totally didn't plan that. Just accidentally happened and realized that's really cool. All right, so I'm gonna pull this one out now, but I'm not gonna pull it all the way out. I'm gonna leave this end down here and still. And I'm going to start on this opposite end and I'm going to grab this loop and pull it through and I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on this side. Just make sure they don't get twisted. You want to make sure that they are in line with their mate. All right, so now I'm going to pull these in, scooch these guys down, and I'm going to do the same thing over here with my clamps. Clamp this side. Now that we have all of these on, this is when you're going to look and decide, is this enough? Do I need more? I'm probably going to add some more to mine because I really want this to be a nice dense rug and I don't want it to be too loose and flimsy. Now if this was going to be a very quick project for you, then the less t-shirt strips you use, the better. But for this project, I think I'm going to add another color, but I'm going to add them on either end so that the colors will just kind of go that way. Now for those of you who do not have a t-shirt that you want to cut up, another thing that works really great is a knit pillowcase. So like those little jersey pillowcases. These work really, really well. Same type of thing, just cut from side to side. Just make sure you're doing it from sewn side to sewn side. And then you'll have some more strips for your loom. You do want to make sure that you cut off any of the edges. You don't want to deal with that. So I'm just going to pull, take this one side out because we're going to do one side at a time because we don't want to lose all of these pieces. Now 
Now, we've got to prepare a whole bunch of socks so that we can weave these into the warp. So what you actually weave into the warp is called the weft. So we're going to cut our socks into strips so that we can weave these socks into the warp. What you're going to do, you're going to go through your socks. Now, if you happen to be one of those people who does not have this problem, first of all, why are you one of those people who doesn't have the problem? How have you figured out how to keep your socks together? Message me in the comments. I need to know. But if you are, by chance, one of those miraculous people and you still want to do this project, you can also use socks that are worn out or you can just use fabric. It is what I'm teaching you now is going to be what you would do if you were just using strips of old clothing or any type of fabric. So it really doesn't have to be socks. I just happen to have an abundance of socks and figured I would much rather put them to good use than just throw them away. I mean, it's such a waste. And it's not their fault they lost their mate. So we're gonna cut these into strips. Now these are going to be skinnier than what we did for our warp. Our warp we did about an inch and a half approximately. These can be half an inch to an inch. They definitely do not need to be as big. Now for those of you who are going to be very particular about creating a color pattern and that type of thing. Then you can always sort your socks by color. That is totally up to you. So for example, here are some that I've already pulled into rope and I just kept my greens together and then I kept my blacks together. So you can definitely do that. Um, or if you want, it can be completely ran random and that will be beautiful too. So it's really up to you. When you have your strips, what you're going to do is you need to connect them because right now they're, they're kind of short and we don't want them too long, but we at least want to have them, I would say probably double this. So in order to get these to come together, what we're going to do is we're going to take our ends, and we're going to match them up just like this and then I'm going to fold the end down so that it's just right here see we've got a little loop up here and I'm gonna take my scissors and where it's folded I'm gonna cut just the tiniest little slit just in big enough to get my finger through it and then I'm gonna take them apart see I've got my finger through this one now I'm going to turn this one over and stick it through my finger. And whichever of the socks is on top, that's the one that you're going to hold the opposite end, pull it through the hole, and then they're going to come together like this. Isn't that cool? It's like its own little knot. All right, so I'm going to show you again. And this time I'm going to show you a little bit closer up so that it's easier for you guys to see. And so I just ball them up whenever I get a little segment that's about that length. And then I'm going to put them in my Valentine box. I found this at Michael's and it was so perfect because I can put all my little balls of yarn in here. But when I'm ready to use them, I can just take that, stick it through the hole. And when I pull it, it's just going to come out neatly without having to worry about it unraveling all over my table. Now, again, this is a simple little cardboard box. You could get a shoe box and cut a little slit in the top. I just thought this one was super cute with the hearts for Valentine's Day. So, okay. So I'm going to show you this a little bit closer up. All right. So we take our two ends. Okay. Let me adjust this so you can see. There we go. 
All right, so we've got our two ends of our fabric. We're gonna put them together like this, okay? Then we're going to fold that end over. Doesn't need to go very deep, just one little fold, because you're gonna be cutting the end of it. And then we're just gonna do a little snip, like that. Just big enough to stick your finger through. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the bottom one, and I'm gonna stick my finger through it. Take this one, and remember, we're trying to make it long, so you'd want them to go together like this, so that the little pieces are facing in opposite, move my fingers, opposite directions. So this one's facing this way, this one's facing this way. So this is the part that gets a little confusing. So I've got my finger through this. This is my bottom piece of fabric. This is the top piece right here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top piece and I'm going to stick it through this hole. All right, so here's, here's my hole. So that top piece is going to go from the bottom up like this. And when you pull them, they come together and make a nice little knot without having to make a knot. And it actually lays, it. the great thing about this is when you do them like this, you see that little hole? When you put them together like this, it lays flat. So without it being, when you put a knot, when you put a knot in this, it really kind of bulks up and this is really, really flat. So that's why people do it this way and it's nice. Now, if you cannot figure out this method, just make a knot, it's okay. All right, roll this up into a ball. Stick it into my cute Valentine's box. And I'm ready to go to the next one. Okay, so I've been working on turning my socks into yarn, essentially, and just balling them up when I'm done so it's easier to kind of find the colors that I want and so it doesn't become a giant knot. So I'm gonna show you guys now how to start twining this onto your warp. So I have my loom here. Sorry, it's kind of a funky angle, but this is the top and we're gonna work our way from the right side over to the left side. And as we start, the one thing you wanna remember is you always use the first loop, the top loop first, then you'll go around the bottom loop. So each time we go, and you'll have to remember this for that first little section. We are gonna start in the top right corner. Turn this down so you can kind of see. I'll scooch this over so you can really see better. So we're gonna start with our top, our very first part of our warp, so our first loop, and we're gonna start at the top. And I'm gonna take, I've got two pieces that I've spliced together and I wanna make sure I move the knot a little bit further away because I don't want the knot to be on the side. And the way that I'm gonna do this, this goes underneath that top one. And then I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm gonna go over this little strand. And then it's going to immediately go under the back one, okay? Then I'm gonna to go to my right hand and I'm gonna go over and then I'm going to go under the next top loop, over, and under the back. And since I've got that knot, I'm going to kind of leave it in the back because I don't want it to show through. Okay? And then I'm going to go over and under, over and under. And you're just going to keep going over under, over, under, over, under, over, under. You're gonna make your way all the way across. And as you can see, there's a pretty big gap between the dowel rod and this. All you need to do is just pull these up. 
Be careful not to pull too hard on the little elastic because it can definitely stretch it out. But you just want to put that as tight against that dowel rod as possible. So we've gotten to the end here. We're just continuing to go over, under, over, under. So we're getting to the last one, okay? So we're gonna go over, and then the last one we're gonna go under. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna go over, okay? And then this one is gonna come back through and go under, all right? And then we're gonna bring this one underneath this. We're gonna turn it under, and then it's gonna go over. And we're gonna start going the opposite direction. So now we're going over, under, over, under. Right. Okay, so as you're going, eventually you're going to be running out of room. So what you have to do is just like I showed you guys how to splice before, you are going to be splicing as you go. So the reason we don't want these these strands to be too long is because you are weaving with them. So if they're really long, they kind of get in your way. So, but we're going to start and same way we did before. Grab my trusty scissors. All right, same as we did before, we're gonna put these two pieces together, fold them over, I take my scissors. I'm just gonna cut, these are kind of thick. I'm gonna cut just kind of a little strip right there. And then I've got a hole here and a hole here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this one go on top. Nope, sorry. This one goes on top because the new one you add always has to go on top because it's the only one that has an available tail to send back through. So put this one on top and then bring this from the bottom and pull it through. And this is how you splice them together. Keep on pulling and then it creates that little knot for you. So now you've got one side that's made longer and now you just have to do the next side. So again, we're gonna fold these over. Cut a tiny little slit. You also wanna make sure you don't get too close to the end, otherwise you'll just rip straight through the fabric when you try to pull the knot. Okay, let's go. Remember, the one we're adding goes on top. Sorry, it keeps coming out of focus. There we go. The one you're adding goes on top so that you can pull it through the bottom and pull it together. There you go. And now we're ready to continue. So this one is going to go over and then we find the next one, okay? And that's going to go under. And now this one will go over and under, over, all right. So we're getting our braid going here. It's a little messy, but it's gonna look great in the end. So I've been working on my sock rag rug, but I wanted to go ahead and show you guys this. For any of you who do not have socks, those rare ones of you who do not have the extra socks, um, maybe you have extra sheets. So I wanted to show you what you can do with these extra sheets to make your own rag rug. Or for those of you who, because I know y'all exist, the people that are really afraid of feet and the thought of touching socks makes them want to, um, well, to like throw up. So I'm gonna show you how to do this out of sheets instead. So. What you're gonna do is just take an old sheet. So I have this like old top sheet that, I, I don't know what happened to the fitted sheet and so I've kept it in my closet. I think I've kept it in my closet because you never know when you're gonna need a sheet. You know, if you need to throw it over a piece of furniture, if you need to put it in the back of your car, if you're moving something. Um, so I've just kind of kept it. 
But what you're going to do is, and this is really, really satisfying. Y'all are going to like it. You're just going to cut. So I cut these about inch and a quarter, inch and a half, two inches. Doesn't, does not have to be exact, which is what's really beautiful about this project. But you're just going to cut the little strips, the top, and then you're going to pull like that. And it stays in line the whole way. Now, when you get to the bottom part, this little tab at the top right here, that's actually technically the, this is actually technically the top of the sheet. It's going to stop your progress, but that's not very far. And really, I'm going to cut it off anyway. So you could go ahead and cut it all the way off and then just keep going. But look, then you have this perfect strip. Now, and you may think, oh my gosh, I've got the string that I've got to deal with. This is not a big deal. With these types of rugs, these strings just kind of get their, get packed down. So um, you don't even notice them. Then you have these to make a rag rug. All right, so when I started this, I started actually on this side. So this thing was flipped over and I started in the top right corner and worked my way across. And I started with a tan and a black and then I added a little orange and a little bit of pink. And I wanted to make sure that I repeated that on this end. Now you don't have to, that was just something that I wanted to do. And so what I did was I worked and I made sure that I saved the other half of that one tan sock and I saved the other half of that one orange sock and pink sock and all that so that I could do it up here. So I finished this, went all the way up, and then I flipped this over. So this was that way. I flipped it over, started up here, and started going back down. So then I was guaranteed that I could get all the colors in a similar spot as they were down here. And now what I'm doing is I'm working across. So here is where I left off. And you'll see these little, these little clips right here. Okay. So these little clips, I'll put a link to those in the description below. They are awesome. Um, and actually all of this I'll link. So if you're wondering where I got any of this stuff, um, just if you'll just look down in the description below, it'll have links to everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue working on this side and make my way until they end up meeting up and then I'm going to show you how to tie this off um, and remove this from the frame so that you will have your rag rug. This is really fun. This is a really fun project so I hope you guys will try it out and um, definitely if you end up making any of the crafts that I do on here be sure to follow me on Instagram and tag me if you post any of these. I would love to see them. I would love to see what you guys create. So I will get to it. This even closer for you. All right, over and under, over, <laughs> and over. And we're just working our way so that we can meet up with these guys, which is where I left off before. Sometimes you can kind of scooch these so it's easier to work in there. The great thing about rag rugs is any time that you're working with it, everything slides around really easily. So you're not stuck with wherever you've put something for the most part as far as like, let's say there's a little gap. Well, you just fill it in. It all just kind of slides nicely. The one thing you do want to make sure of as you're working is that you kind of keep your lines, um, kind of keep them even. So as you're working, just kind of scooch everything up so you have nice straight lines. Otherwise you end up with everything kind of at an angle. Okay, so now that I've turned it this way, this is going in the opposite direction. So, 
for example, this one went under, so then this one would go over and under and over. And then I'm going to take this one over here. There we go. And we're going to just tie that off in the back. And then with these guys, this one, I'm going to push through. And try to push. I can find a good spot for that one. Let's go around that one and through. Because it should it should hide nicely underneath that gray. If I can find it, here we go. Okay, so now I can kind of hide those little stitches. So we're going to flip this over and this is going to be where we're going to tie off, but notice we've got the bar here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to take this off of the loom. So now we are going to take our rag rug off of our loom. And it is very simple. You just take your clamps off and then we're going to slide our dowel rod out. And we're just going to kind of shift our fabric down as we go. And you're just going to twist it off. And you'll see our little loops. So here's our little loops up here. Now, if you now if you were not wanting to put any fringe on this, what you would do is you would pull this and it would fill in these little loops right here. But because I'm going to put fringe on these, I'm going to leave those loops. And now we're going to slide this one out. I'm just twisting and pulling this fabric as I go. It really is simple, guys. There we go. So now I've got my rug off of my loom. Set this to the side to use another time. Guys, I think in total I maybe spent maybe spent $10 making this loom. And some of the stuff you're going to already have in your house. Like these little clamps, you probably have screws, you probably have. And then, you know, when it comes to the size of the canvas frame, I mean, whatever canvas you have. And this is from a cheap one, so if this thing's sturdy and holding up, then you know you're going to be good to go. Alright, so I'm going to set that to the side. So we have the back of our rug, which you can kind of see all the little um, strips coming out. What I'm going to do now is tie these into a little knot, and then I'm going to kind of weave it back through so it's just not hanging loose. Some of these little pieces, like I don't mind so much. I mean, it's you, you're not going to be able to see it. It's going to be this side facing down, so um, I'm not that worried about it. The bigger ones, yes, because, I mean, obviously you could see this guy hanging out. He's kind of big. All right, so I'm going to tie a knot into these. I'll show you what I'm going to do, and then I'll show you how I'm going to put this fringe on. I have no head in this shot. That's okay. So, because I just really want to show you, you're just going to take these pieces, and you can just tie them into a knot like that. And then you can cut them shorter, just so they're not so long. And then just find a little loop and stick it through like that, okay? 
Same thing with this. Tie a little knot. Cut it a little bit shorter. Find a little loop. Stick it through. Here's our last little section. So, some people will put on their, on their looms, they'll put iron rods on the sides and they will use that iron rod to keep their rug really nice and square. I, now, a lot of those people also sell their rugs, so they want them to be perfect and nice and square. I kind of like my rugs to be especially especially for something that you know I mean we used old socks to make this like I don't need this to be absolutely perfect um, I kind of like I kind of like that it's a little off um, and it's really not even that far off but what we're gonna do now is I'm going to show you how to add the fringe to this and I apologize that you're having to look at me this way but I'm gonna add the fringe here. So let me get the fabric for that and we will get started. So I actually have a bucket of scraps from sewing projects and I just hold on to them because I mean you just never know when you're gonna need scraps of fabric. But these work perfect for fringe. So all I'm going to do is gather some scraps. Let's a nice assortment. So I'm going to get, let's see, one, two, three, four. I think I'm going to stick with four. So I'm going to get four little strips of fabric and I do want these to be approximately the same size. So similar width, similar length. But I'm not going to worry about the length just yet because I'm going to cut it so that it has a similar length. So I'm going to take this fabric and I'm going to fold it in half so that there's like a loop at the top. And then I'm going to stick the loop from the top side. So let me move this so you can really see. So here is my first little loop of my rug. I'm going to take this loop and I'm going to stick it through here, coming from the top down. And I'm going to pull that. So it's like this, okay? And then I'm going to put my, uh, my pointer finger and my thumb through that little loop. And I'm going to pull the rest of that fabric through. And then I'm going to pull tight. Okay? And what that's going to do is that's going to cause a little knot and then we get this fun little fringe. So you can take this and I can cut that down and then I have my fun little tassel on my rug. And I love that it's different fabrics because you know this has so many different colors in it so I love that I've got this kind of funky little fringe going. All right, so I'm going to show you that again. So I'm going to get four pieces. I find four good pieces of fabric. Okay. So I've got four pieces. I'll lay these out. All right, same thing. I'm going to take this loop. I've got my fabric. I lined it up, I fold it in half, and I make a loop at the top. I'm going to stick it through my loop, okay, from the top, going down. Then I'm going to pull that fabric back through itself, and then I'm going to pull tight. Okay, and then 
just going to use the one next to it as a sort of guide. So I'm going to cut my little tassel. My little fringe. Alright. Isn't it cute? I love it. Alright, so I'm going to keep working on these. I'm going to get a closer up, a close up shot for you guys so you can really see what I'm talking about um, as I do these. My strips. Let's find a good one. Some of these are from a quilt that I did, so they still have some strings on them. I just cut it off. No biggie. pink in there, and some orange. Okay, I love these colors. All right, so I've got four strips. Now what I'm gonna do is fold those strips in half, okay? Take my loop, I'm going to go down from the top, and then while it's here, see here, I'm going to push this through the loop, okay? And then I'm going to pull tight. You want it really tight because you don't want that to go anywhere. Okay, see? And now you've got this gorgeous tassel. And we're going to take the one next to it and kind of eyeball. Again, remember, these don't have to be perfect. And now we have some more fringe. Love that hot pink and that orange. Isn't it fun? And then as you go through, if you're looking and you're like, oh gosh, that one's a little bit longer, well then you just go down and you cut it. It's not a big deal. It does not have to be exact. It is, in fact, a rag rug, so it does not have to be perfect. It has to be perfectly imperfect. Well, guys, here she is. My pretty rag rug with her fabulous little fringe. Isn't she cute? Anyway, this was such a fun project. Um, I've really... I'm amazed at how good a bunch of random old socks look. And it is kind of funny because, you know, they started out, their purpose in life was to help my feet stay warm. And now they're going to do the same as a rug. So I hope you guys had fun. I hope that you will try this. It is such an easy project. It is so much fun. And I, I really am interested to see the different sizes that you guys make. I want to know. I want, I want somebody to make a gigantic one. Like get a huge, huge canvas and make a big one of these and then tag me in it. I want to see it. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified when my videos come out and any of the materials that I use in this will be listed in the description below. So I hope you have a wonderful crafternoon and I'll see you guys next time.